I'm Lisa Curcio, and I would love to welcome you here to Lisa's Stamp Studio. Today is Monday, February 21st. The year is 2022. This is a YouTube live streaming event. Whether you are returning or this is your first time, I am privileged that you're here. Thank you for joining me. I have a gorgeous technique to show you that's called a vellum overlay technique, but we're gonna add some more fun to this project by using alcohol-based Stampin' Blends markers. Now I've got lots to share with you tonight. I've got two demonstrations for you and a total of four different card samples. And the best part about all of that is you don't have to worry about writing down all the notes and instructions because I have a detailed project sheet that's going to include multiple pictures of each card cutting dimensions, and the supplies that I've used. That's gonna make your viewing experience a lot more enjoyable. And speaking of viewing experience, we would love to have you log into your YouTube account, which is your Gmail address, so that you can chat with us. I come back and look at and read and reply to every single comment, whether you are here in the live chat or you are watching the replay. And then finally, I just wanna take a minute to introduce you to Gina Curcio Hawley. You might recognize that surname. Gina is my daughter. She's the sales and marketing director here at Lisa Stamp Studio and an avid stamper for about 25 years. She's here in the live chat with you. Her name is in blue. She's here to help answer your questions while I'm stamping because I can't keep up. And she's gonna help provide you with links. So go ahead and interact with Gina. Just a reminder about that project sheet. You're gonna be able to find the link down in the video description below when tonight's live stream is over. If you are here for the live chat, Gina's gonna share that link with you as it becomes available a little bit later in the stream. Now, before we get started, I just wanna go over and talk to you quickly about this as a reminder. Believe it or not, March 1st, which is next week, is the very first day that you can register for the online stamping retreat. Now I have partnered with the number one Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Australia, Kylie Bertucci, and her amazing husband, Bruno. Gina and I will be stamping with them on a full day's worth of interaction and inspiration, and we sure hope that you're gonna enjoy it. I can tell you what, you can see I've got new buttons, right? <laughs> they give me more buttons and it's harder to push them all, but here's a quick synopsis. Right now, if you would do me a favor, head over to the link in the bottom of the screen. Gina's gonna share that with you as well. You can sign up for just interested information and we'll let you know when registration opens up. There's no commitment right now, but we sure would love to have you on that list. Okay, now we're ready to get started. Some of the buttons are a little more sensitive than others, so you'll just have to forgive me. I am learning new things. Okay, let's start with a little bit of scoring first. Now this is my paper trimmer and I cannot live without this thing because there's both a scoring and a cutting blade. Now they stay on the clear track and they navigate up and down out of the way. You can go see that this one's at the top. And then of course this one's all the way here at the bottom, which means you don't have to take them off, which makes life so easy. This clear cutting guide is fantastic because you can actually see the cutting track. Great for fun folds and for scoring projects. There is an extension arm on this that goes out to 17 inches. So for all my scrapbookers out there, you are set. There is a finish on here that you don't have to worry about this rubbing off, so that's another great thing. As I said, we are working on a gorgeous vellum overlay card tonight, and I've got my piece of vellum here. All those cutting dimensions are going to be in your project sheet, but this is four and a quarter by 11. Now we are gonna score this at the half inch area, which is five and a half inches. Now I don't do anything straight, so I love that there's a ledge here at the top and the bottom so that you can line up your paper. So I'm looking here at the five and a half inches and I am going to score. Now, one thing about vellum I want to remind you about is that you don't wanna to score too, too hard because this is not like cardstock. So I'm just looking to make an impression here. We'll come back to that in a minute. Now I have an additional piece of cardstock. This is two and three quarters by eight inches and this one we're gonna score in half and that is at four inches and we're gonna score. Okay, that's all we need to do with the trimmer for right now. I'm gonna set that off to the side. And since we have this piece, let's go ahead and let's fold up on this. And then what we are gonna do is go over it with that bone folder for that nice crisp crease. You'll recall that I had the vellum for you as well. That score line might be really difficult to see in the video because you know this is all white on white here. But I'm gonna go ahead and just measure up those ends to make sure they're nice and even. And then we'll go over this with the bone folder as well. 
I'm going to recommend that you do this first because that center line for both of these pieces of paper is going to be very important. Now we're going to put this off to the side for just a minute, but we're going to do some stamping on here first. Now I'm going to open this so that it's nice and flat. I do want to know where that crease is because that's going to be important for my stamping tonight. Now the image I chose is nice and big and bold and open and I chose that specifically because I wanted to do some bright coloring with the alcohol based markers. Now the stamp set that I chose is Batik Boutique. Now, that's a mouthful, isn't it? But I love this because if you'll notice, these will fill this as well as the leaves and the images here. But if you're like me and you also love to color, you have options. So you can use the outline or you can do that two-step by filling it. Lots of fun, really, really different. And you'll find that in the annual catalog in my online store. Now we're going to use Memento Black ink. This is a water-based ink and this is what you're going to need to use when you're using alcohol-based markers because the alcohol and the water will not interact to cause bleeding. So let's go ahead and let's open this up. Of course my stamp just kind of flew off that paper and I'm going to use that grid sheet underneath me because I can't do anything straight. It's also going to act as a barrier to catch my excess. Let me just move up inside your camera view just a smidgen more. I'm going to start by inking this up. Want lots of firm, even pressure, get all those little lines. This is a photopolymer stamp. Photopolymer is clear, which means you can see through it. Boy, doesn't that make our life easy? So we're gonna stamp one here. Make sure you take your time and you trace out that image. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold it and I'm gonna turn because I want an image here. I wanna make sure it's folded so that not the other part of it is gonna go on the back of that piece. So I'm gonna ink this up one more time. And how much you put here or how little you put here is really entirely up to you. And again, this one specifically is going to have two images. Now I am doing this specifically two different ways for you tonight. So make sure you hang with me and I've got four samples to share with you. I like to stamp off all that excess ink before I take it over to my stamp and scrub, which cleans my stamp. Never put your stamps away dirty. I'm gonna put that off to the side and I'm gonna flip this over just so it's not too distracting. Now I want to talk to you a little bit about the coloring and then we're going to move on to the overlay. Again, I like to make things nice and flat if I can because that's going to make it a lot easier for my hand. The next step for me would be to color the image. Now don't worry, I'm not going to color the whole thing. I've got one that's already finished, but I want to give you an idea of some tips for using these alcohol-based markers. Now this is the polished pink. And they come in the duo just like all the Stampin' Blends markers. So there's a light and a dark shade of each of those color tones. And I love them because you can use them independently, just like a regular marker, or you can use them together to do some professional blending. They are double-sided, so you'll see here by the line that it indicates the size of the tip. You're going to choose whichever one is best for you. This one has very long needle brush tip. This one's more chiseled like a pen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the cap and I'm going to work on just one petal here just to give you an idea of what I'm going to do. You can see that the color goes on effortlessly. You don't even have to work very, very close to that outline because honestly, with an alcohol base in this marker, it's going to spread just a little bit. The other thing is you don't have to worry about getting every little area because with an alcohol based marker, they are intended to do some blending. The important thing I can tell you is you want to let this first layer of color sit for a few seconds so that alcohol base can evaporate from itself. Then the secret comes in with the darker shade. Now this time what I'm going to do is I'm just going to decide where I want that darker color to fall. So I'm going to work kind of down here at the bottom because there's no lines in the stamp set to indicate, um, you know, like sketch marks for density. So I'm just going to pick one area. Again, that needs to sit in process. If you try to go back over these to blend these two shades together too quickly, you're going to have some blending or some bleeding into that color area. So let it process. I love to color. I find it incredibly therapeutic. I know a lot of people don't, but I think that if you try these, you're going to get hooked. You're going to be able to find these in my online store at lisastampstudio.com. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm looking to pull the dark into the light to get rid of that hard differentiation that's here. So I'm coming up here and I'm pulling. And you're going to notice as I'm coloring, it's going to start to look like it's changing colors, doesn't it? 
Now, the great thing about these alcohol-based markers is they are buildable, which means you can go back and do extra blending if it doesn't look the way that you want it. I'm giving this time to process. Now, on these really bright, sharp colors like this, I find that sometimes I want to do a little bit more coloring, and I'm going to allow time for that to process. Now, I have one that's already finished, and I'm going to bring that in here so that you can see it. Here it is. Isn't this gorgeous? Oh, my gosh. And like I said, coloring for me is very, very therapeutic. So you may not want to use an image this large, but keep in mind there's no rules. So you can fill your corners with whatever you want. Now that we have this finished, do you remember the vellum? All right. Now I'm gonna teach you two different ways tonight. This is the first demonstration. We are going to lay this down inside of here like so. Now, if you're like me, you always have issues with this moving. So I'm gonna take a little tiny bit of my Stamp and Seal Plus. I mean a little bit, because this stuff is super strong. I'm not even afraid about touching it, so the oils in my skin are gonna pick it up. And in between the layers here of the card base, what I am looking to do visually now is center this. Now, if you're like me, you have to get your head right over it. So I apologize if you see my head. And I'm looking to try to make it as centered as possible. And then when it looks pretty good, what we're going to do is we're just going to push. So there's a little bit of adhesive on the back that's going to position this. And that's going to hold this in place. Now, when you're using photopolymer stamps, this next step, super duper easy because we can see where we're going but wait until the next demonstration. All right, the very first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we are gonna to wanna to make sure we have our embossing powder ready. Now you can use any color that you want. I am using white for this. You can use gold, silver, black, whatever tickles your fancy. I'm gonna make sure that this is opened into the side of me. This snap container is my lifesaver because I'll be honest with you, sometimes in the studio, I kinda of go too fast and things go flying. This is not a Stampin' Up! product, but I linked it for you on my website under Shop Craft Room Favorites. I love these snap containers for my embossing powders. And I've got one for each of the colors. I'm just get, getting that ready off camera. I want to make sure I have that open and ready to go. The next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to ready this surface for embossing. And because vellum is a very thin type of paper, it's not like cardstock. And I loved to use this. This used to be known as an embossing buddy. Now Stampin' Up! doesn't sell this anymore, so I linked it for you in my Craft Room Favorites. Just go over to my website under Shop Craft Room Favorites. I love it because what it does is it's going to tell the embossing powder not to stick where there isn't ink. Amazing. So we're going to use Versamark ink. Now I'm going to leave this underneath here so that we can get an idea on positioning. I'm going to open up the Versamark ink and I'm going back to that same image we used underneath. Again, this is photopolymer. Wait till you see what happens when we use red rubber. So we're going to ink this up. We're tapping to make sure we've got good coverage on here. I'm going to move that off to the side and I am looking to hover over the top. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, my 60 something year old um, eyes, I got to get close. So I'm going to look here and I'm going to stamp. I'm going to make sure that I'm as close as I possibly can. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to immediately come in. This is my little tidy tray. I've got one of these linked for you in my craft room favorites. And I am sprinkling embossing powder over the top. I want to make sure that it's powdered before I heat set it. I work on this next one because I don't want that ink to dry. Remember, that ink is damp for a reason, so we can put powder over the top. So I'm going to move this. And you may be wondering, wow, are you getting powder all over? Yeah, probably a little bit because I've got the ceiling fan on here in Florida. But I'm going to talk to you about that in a minute. Now let's talk about this. Now we've got another image here. I'm going to come back to the Versamark and we are going to ink this up as well. Again, I'm going to hover right over the top. Again, I'm trying not to get my head in your camera view, just doing the best that I can. And I'm going to stamp. All right, and then we're going to do the exact same thing that we've done before. I'm coming back in with my little tray to catch my excess, and I'm working with a plastic spoon generously over that image. I love using the spoon. That works really, really well for me. And then, of course, this will get capped, and I'll be able to store that. Now, before I powder, let's talk about this. Remember that has Versamark ink on it. Never leave Versamark ink on your stamps. Once you've used it, make sure you clean it before you put it away because it leaves a sticky residue, which is fine temporarily, but you don't want to leave it there. 
Now that this is all in place, watch what I'm doing. I'm opening this up and I'm slightly giving this a wiggle to remove that adhesive. And I'm gonna put that off to the side. Now we're going to heat set. Now I realize that it's going to be a little bit louder, but I know that you can hear me. Now the Stampin' Up! heat tool is the bomb because it has two speeds. There's a speed one, which I like for drying the ink to help speed up the process of certain techniques. Speed two is faster and hotter and it's gonna help speed up the heating of the vellum. Now, I always like to get it started and it's gonna be a little loud, but I know you can hear me, to get the heat flowing and get the tool hot. Having the tool hot before you start is very, very important. A lot of people are intimidated by vellum because it's very, very thin, not like cardstock. So I have some really great tips for you. You are going to hold it close to the paper and you're gonna keep it moving, but you don't wanna overheat the paper because the paper has a tendency to warp. All right, well that in itself is all great, but guess what? Did you know that you can open up the vellum and you're gonna heat set from the inside? What that's going to do is it's going to create an evenness in that warping. So you've got a little heat from the top, and then a little heat from the bottom, and you're gonna do the entire image, okay? Now, I'm not gonna to torture you by making you watch the whole thing and keep this on for a good solid minute for the, for the, obviously for the sound, but I just wanna give you an idea of how this can work. The tool is very, very hot. You do not wanna get your fingers near here, which is why it's encased to protect you. The great thing about this is that it will retain its heat because of the encasement, which is allowing you to be able to do repeated type images, repetition. So that's gonna make it easier to do the next one. All right, let me set this off to the side for just a moment. We will probably be coming back to that. But before you join me, I went ahead and I did this one, okay? So let me put this one off to the side. Just make a little room here. I've got stuff everywhere to show you tonight. And you remember this? Well, this is going to fit this. And I did this a little bit ahead of time to show you. Now it's just a matter of deciding how we're going to embellish this. Now I've got a couple more tips that are really important. Because this is alcohol-based ink, guess what's gonna happen here to your cardstock? Uh-huh. I've already stamped my greeting here, but this really isn't very pretty, is it? All right, so what I did, and this of course is in your cutting dimensions as well, is we're gonna cover this. Let me show you. First and foremost, this is a little gritty, and that's common when you're using the heat tool with the powder. So how many of you recognize this? This is half of a Swiffer cloth, and I'm sure you probably have these at home to clean with. These are wonderful for picking up the embossing powder on your work surface. That little bit of powder that's on there can easily transfer to your ink pads, and you certainly don't want that. Now, I keep a bunch of these cut in half, and I keep them in the studio. They're great for cleanup. So what I'm gonna do now is bring in that silicone craft sheet, and I've cut myself another piece of cardstock that's going to cover this. Now, I labeled it before you joined me because they're cut specifically for your project sheet. And I'm going to add some adhesive to this. This is a smidgen, if not the same size, as the inside cover of this piece of cardstock. Now, I'm going to put the silicone craft sheet underneath it so that you can see a little bit better. And I'm looking to get as close to that crease as possible, but I want to make sure that the card is going to close up near that crease, looking at my sides, and we're gonna press that in place. That's gonna hide all that ugly, but we're not done yet. Let's go ahead and flip this over and let's go ahead and add some more adhesive around here. Now, because I know that the vellum is a much thinner type of paper, I am going to add adhesive generously around the border because I wanna make sure this is well stuck in place. Now, the silicone craft sheet is a wonderful tool. I love it because adhesive, liquid glue, and hot glue will not stick to it which means you're gonna keep your work surface sticky free. It's gonna be the best few bucks you ever spend. Let's open this up. And now what we're gonna do is we are gonna kind of work backwards on this one. I don't know why I can't get it open. Probably because you're watching me. Okay, there we go. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I've opened this up and I've got the top layer here. And all I'm doing is to look and mimic the black ink underneath to the embossed image on the top. And I'm hoping to get it as straight as possible. Once I'm happy with the placement, I folded the back half underneath and I'm just looking to kind of align it the best that I can. And then once I'm happy, I'm going to press because remember there's adhesive around that layer and then we're going to push. Let's flip this over and let's rub. Well, there's another unsightly spot, right? Because you can see the adhesive now on the back. 
So I've cut one more. I have this in your cutting dimensions as well. So let's go ahead and let's add this here. You know, when you make a card that's as beautiful as this, um, you want to make sure that you've got all the little bells and whistles to it because you want it to look really professional when it's finished. This is a great place for scraps of designer series paper as well. So you absolutely can add that if you can coordinate it with your project. And then we're just going to mimic this over the top. Now, here's what I love about this card. Not only does the vellum overlay open, but you can see through this because it's transparent. And then you can see this beautiful layer here. And then, of course, the area for your greeting here. Now, I have one more variation for you, but let me bling this one up a little bit because I want to talk to you about these gems. These are the in color gems. I love these little jewels. They have glue dots already on the back and they coordinate gorgeous with the ink that I've used. So just for fun, I am going to go ahead and I'm going to take this small one that I've already got stuck in my finger and I'm going to put that one here and I'm going to take another one and put it here and I'm going to take another one and do it here. Now I've got another one to share with you that has a greeting on it. Now this one I love because look how that black pops. Now I'm going to intend to put a greeting across here so that it's going to fit something smaller when I'm ready to use this card specifically. But this one I did ahead of time and I want to show you the difference. This is heat embossed and black embossing powder, which means this just pops right off that page. That vellum overlay provides just a little bit of transparency to that very vibrant color that's underneath. And then of course, to the inside of that card. Isn't this striking? So obviously a card that you could use for anything. Just think of wedding invitations, shower invitations, announcements, very, very classy. All right, but now I wanna teach you another thing. Remember that this was using photopolymer, which means the stamp is clear. And I created one more for you, and that was with this. Now this stamp set also is photopolymer. Isn't this beautiful? I know you're gonna ask me which one it is. I have to cheat and look. It's hand-penned. For a second there, I drew a blank. It's called hand-penned. It's a very, very popular stamp set right now in the annual catalog. Again, look at that, how pretty. This time I opted for the greeting here on the actual card itself. And then this one opens as well. And I absolutely love that you've got a card and a card because otherwise you'd have to write on the back, right? So these two, as I just shared with you, were done with photopolymer stamps. Now let's talk about what happens when you're using red rubber. I'm gonna move this one out of the way and I've got to bring in some extra tools. So give me one second here. I have got quite a stack of things I'm gonna be bringing in to share with you. I just need to make a little bit more room. All right, I've got another piece of grid paper, which we're gonna be using in a moment, and I cannot wait to share another tip with you about alcohol-based markers. Now, this is the Stamp Aratus. When you purchase the Stamp Aratus, it comes with everything you see here. You're gonna get two magnets, and there's one here, and I've got one already on the platform. We'll talk about that in a minute. It comes with this little foam mat, and this is for photopolymer stamps because the difference between these and red rubber is they don't have that foam between the impression. So you need a little bit of lift. So that comes with the Stamparatus tool. Obviously my next demonstration is with red rubber, so we will not need this for this particular card. So I'm gonna set this off to the side. Now don't be looking at this thinking, oh my gosh, what is all this? I'll explain that to you in a minute, but for right now you can just ignore all this because that's gonna be another part of this demonstration that's gonna help you moving forward. I know there is a glare of the overhead camera and I do apologize for that. So I'm gonna add a little piece here to kind of help deter that. Your stamp case is gonna be really great for the inside cover because for the Stamparatus stamp positioning tool, you do not need a clear block for your stamp. It's gonna go here. So I'm gonna be using the Daffodil a Daydream and I've pulled out this image and I'm gonna add this up underneath here like so. Guess what that's just done? That's given me a level playing field right across here so that I can mount my image very easily. This time I'm gonna grab a different piece of vellum. Let me grab that now. And I already did the scoring because we already went over that. So let's go ahead and let's fold that. And I'm gonna crease that up and I'm gonna go over that with my bone folder, just like we've done once before. Let's go over that. We want that nice crisp crease done beforehand. That's gonna be very important when you're using red rubber as well. I am going to position this in an area on my platform that you choose. Now, for me, I like to start at the top because remember I told you I can't do anything straight, so I love ledges. 
So I'm going to choose the top and I thought, well, the Stampin' Up! logo is here. That's kind of a great place for me to remember where I put it. Now the magnets are super duper strong. So I've added multiple layers of washi tape. You can use duct tape, packing tape, whatever works for you. It gives you a place to hold on to them. Important that you know about the stamp positioning tool. These Stamparatus magnets are extremely strong. So remember I told you there were two, the other ones on the back? I only find I need one. You do not want them to come in contact with one another because they can snap and break. And let me tell you, you don't want to get your fingers pinched between there. So that's an important tip. So again, I'm aligned here. I am going to place this here where I think I'm not going to need it. Let's go ahead and let's take that image. And the great thing about the Stamparatus stamp positioning tools, I can decide where I want this before I go crazy, right? So this looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to close that clear hinge and I'm going to press. The Stamparatus stamp positioning tool is the only one I know on the market that has two plates. So guess what? If you are doing a lot of stamping, you can put one plate here and one plate here and you can go back and forth and it's wonderful. Now I'm going to do a little bit of stamping off because I know it's going to hang off that little bit here. But what we want to do is ready this just like we did before. So we are going to powder this with that embossing buddy. That's in my craft room favorites. Prepare that surface. We've got the Versamark ink. Here's the image. I'm going to take this like this. That stamp case underneath is allowing this to be level. It's not going to be on an incline. And that's going to make sure that I get all those great spots. So we're going to ink that up, tapping it upside down, face up, however you want to call this, is going to make it really easy to make sure you don't miss a spot. Then what we're going to do is we are going to press. Now I have osteoarthritis and a viewer sent me this. I don't know what this is, but she, I think she made it. Actually, lots of viewers have sent me all different kinds of these stamp little pressure things. Now I used to use a dry eraser, which works really, really well, but this works even better. Gripping with my arthritis is really, really difficult. So it takes the pressure off of here. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to lift. Now I know you can't see it, but it's there. We're going to take this off. This is going to need to be cleaned. We'll talk about that in a second. I'm going to try to fit all this inside your camera view. Here comes that embossing powder. And then what we're going to do is we're going to cover that with the spoon. Now I know we've done this before, so I'm not going to bother you with the heat tool once again, but obviously we would heat emboss this just like we did before. Some from the inside, some from the outside. I did do that ahead of time just to save a little bit of time with you. And let me bring in that one. That gives us this. Beautiful, huh? Okay, let's talk about this because now we've got to switch inks, but you don't want to move this because the positioning is just right. And that is where this comes in. This is the Simply Chamois. Now, obviously when it gets wet, just like a chamois for a car, it's going to expand. It's going to hold a great deal of water and it's fantastic. And it's not a dripping mess. I cut this in half and I actually put it inside one of my clear mount stamp cases. Now you can buy these cases empty in my online store. This is a sign that they are well loved. So don't let that worry you. I just leave it right on top of here. I just wipe that Versamark ink off because now we're gonna change things. Now I'm gonna put that off camera for just now. And now we're gonna work on the card insert. Now this is where the stamp positioning tool becomes really, really important. But you're probably thinking, well, how do you know where to put this? I'm going to teach you and then I'm going to explain what these are for. We're going to fold this in half and once again we're going to go over that with a bone folder. We want a nice crisp crease here. What you're going to do is you are going to hold this piece of paper inside where you want it and you're kind of just looking to try to make it as straight as possible. So I'm looking a little bit left and a little bit right and I think oh this probably can go over here just a little bit. I think you get the gist but what I'm doing is I'm actually want to entice you not to do this, but to do this. This is where the transparency of this paper comes into play. Watch, I'm going to move the actual magnet out of the way. I am going to lay this vellum exactly where I had it before. Remember here it was at the top and I filed this line down to the Stampin' Up! logo. Then I'm going to move the vellum and I can use the grid that's printed on here to help me make this piece of paper straight. And then I'm going to tack that down. Do you see how I mark these? That's going to be really important in a minute. We're going to come back here to the Memento ink because remember we're going to use Stampin' Blends markers. 
We've cleaned off that stamp and now what we're going to do is we are going to ink it face up once again. These steps create the most stunning cards. I cannot wait to show you these next few cards. So I'm covering that with ink and then I'm going to add a little bit of scratch paper because I know it's going to hang off the bottom. And then once again, you can push with your fingers or if you're like me and you got arthritis, this is so wonderful. Thank you to all my YouTube viewers who send the most amazing gifts. You guys are amazing. Thank you. And then I'm going to take a peek. Well, you know what? I got a spot there that could use a little bit more pressure. So guess what? I can just close it back up and I can push to get that residual ink off on there. Or you can even re-ink it and stamp. Oh, that looks much, much better. Now, I'm going to clean this because I don't want to leave any ink on my stamps. Using that chamois once again. This has just got water on it, so don't worry about it getting on top of here. I do not recommend anything with chemicals on top of this because you don't want to muddy up the glass. It'll kind of turn a funky color. It's not intended for that. So here comes my card. I am going to move this out of the way for just a moment and then I'm going to talk to you about this. If you are making multiple cards like me, because look it, I was really busy today. I don't have to worry about remembering where every position was. Grab yourself a piece of post-it note or a piece of washi tape, whatever works. And wherever you lined up the first one, I put here vellum base. So this, that's this one. So every piece of vellum now I know is going to get lined up here straight down to the edge. Then I know that every piece of cardstock is going to get lined up here. Here's my top. Here's my base. I don't have to realign each and every single one. As long as the cardstock and the vellum measurements are the same, you are good to go. All right, I wanted to make sure I shared that tip with you. This obviously gets peeled right off, goes right back in your stamp case. Really slick. All right, I'm going to move this out of the way because I want to teach you a really cool coloring technique with the Stampin' Blends markers. I want to make sure that I pulled out the right one that's going to fit with the right image because I probably got them look messed up. Okay, there we go. The next thing I want to teach you is how to get a variation of different tones using your alcohol markers. So I'm going to protect my work surface and I'm not going to do the whole thing because again, I have another card that's already finished for you. But I'm going to use a variety of colors this time because I want this to look more realistic. The first color that I'm using is the Light Daffodil Delight Stampin' Blends markers. Again, double-sided. This time, even though those areas are very, very small, I am going to use that brush tip because I want that real soft placement of color. So I'm going to work here and I'm going to pull color out. So I'm kind of just like feathering it. I guess that's a good way to describe it. Now I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'm just going to do a little bit of this flower just so you get an idea of how this is going to work. Just like we've done before, that alcohol base has to sit. That alcohol base has to evaporate. This is the light pumpkin pie. I know it sounds horrible, doesn't it? But wait until you see. Now you're going to want to use this one a little bit less sparingly. So we're going to put that here a little bit there and a little bit of color. I think one of the great things about alcohol-based markers is that people don't realize how you can mix the colors to get new shades. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with the dark Daffodil Delight. Remember, these are sold in a combo. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bleed these colors together. So I'm going to pull these like this. And then you can feather out that color a little bit long. And it's going to actually just spread it and change the consistency of the color ever, ever so slightly. Now, I know that does not look like much, but I have to show you the finished one that I made before you joined me. Now, is that stunning or what? Now, do you see how the differentiation in the colors have come together with the bleeding of these alcohol markers? This is something you can't get with a dye-based marker. One reason I love these, again, you can use these independently. Regular markers are going to leave streaks where you've left off. This does not. I use this one specifically for an Easter card, but of course you can make it any occasion that you like. Those daffodils are beautiful. I'm going to bring in my Swiffer cloth once again and just pick up that excess embossing powder because I can feel it there. And now we're ready to put this card together, but this one's got a little bit of a twist and I have an additional sample to share with you. Now I put the inside layer on already because I've already showed you how to do that. But wait till you see what I do to the outside of this one. So we're going to add some adhesive around the perimeter. Again, using my silicone craft sheet around that outside. I want to make sure that if I get too excited, it doesn't make my work surface all sticky. And then I'm going to line this up on here. And just like we've done before, we're going to be able to place this down inside. And I'm looking to line this up the very best that I can. 
I don't think this was the actually original one that I made, but that's okay. You guys get the gist. I had several of these done in progression, so you didn't have to watch me. All right, so there we go. But let's finish this one up. Look what I did. This is from the exact same stamp set called Daffodil Dream. There is a little butterfly in here and there is a die to cut this out and I am loving this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip that over and we're gonna grab one of the mini dimensionals. I'm using the paper piercing tool attachment on my take your pick tool, which I can't live without because that's gonna help me get off all those little backings. Helps you to pick up those small pieces and sequence. And then this is gonna get positioned right here on the card. Now this one, yeah, obviously was not the one they intended for the embossing. So let me show you this one. This is what it looks like when it's all finished. Is this not absolutely beautiful? Look at, I added some of those gems, the exact same package of gems I used for the first card. And here's that vellum overlay. So not only is it pretty from the front, but wow, look at it from the inside. Isn't this beautiful? And then again, of course, I covered the back so that it looked nice and professional. Now, again, this is red rubber. So this is a cling stamp. And I have one other for you. This one is from Free as a Bird. And this time I use a more detailed image, longer instead of tall. I did the exact same thing that I did before. You'll see on this one that I actually covered the, colored these in with the blends using a variety of different colors and left the inside of this bird a different shade just really to play up some colors here and give this a little more emphasis from the front. The exact same thing was done here as was done on the other card. So the inside is all layered so you don't see all the alcohol base come through. But aren't these pretty? All right, so here you've got two cards that we did with red rubber. And then we had these two cards that we did with photopolymer stamps. I wanted to be able to show them to you both ways so that you don't have to look at your artillery of stamps and go, Oh, it's not polymer, I can't do it. Or it's not red rubber, I can't do it. You can, so I want to teach you both ways. Now, before we go, I want to mention one thing to you because there's only a few days left of this celebration. Twice a year, I should almost said once a year, but twice a year now, Stampin' Up! does celebration. And for every $50 you spend in product, you can choose something free from this book. And the last day is next Monday, February 28th. And if you're not aware of that, I want to tell you one little thing. How about extra two free stamp sets? Right now, the custom starter kit allows you to choose the products of your choice for $125 in value, and you pay only $99 with free shipping. Now, that does make you a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, but don't worry. We absolutely love the paper crafter who wants a discount on her own supplies. We would love to have you join my stamping team. You can find a ton more information over on my website under join. Go check it out. And you're going to be able to include two extra free stamp sets as part of that promotion. Host exclusive stamp sets and celebration products are not included in that. But oh my gosh, just think of all the products you can get for a reduced price of $99. Now, a couple other things about next week's live that I wanna make sure that you are aware of. It's a big day here in the studio next Monday. It is the last Monday of the month. So guess what that means? Gina is going to be here live with me in next Monday, and we have a ton of cards for you. I think we ended up with seven totals. She showed me up. I'm gonna tell you, she's going to teach a technique and an incredible card, as well as myself, and you're not going to want to miss it. So if you're not subscribed, click that subscribe button down below and the little bell icon, click that and the word all. Then YouTube is going to send you reminders so you don't forget. Head over to lisastampstudio.com, check out my exclusive rewards, sign up for my newsletter. I would love to include you so you get an extra PDF tutorial every week, not included on any of my other platforms. Gina, thanks for all your hard work tonight and I look forward to seeing you all with us both next Monday. Have a great evening, everyone. Bye-bye.